2023. Uh, I really haven't managed to make anything yet so my plan is to just try and smash it out as much as possible today. I have a very small hobby space so it's going to be interesting trying to sort this out but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay so we have a shit ton of jewellery and other bits and bobs. We've got various bits of kit and all that stuff have loads and loads of copper wire and like molds and lenses and things xps foam that's that's going to come very that's good well that's going to be the most important bit <laughs> to be honest then we have loads of rusty metal that i found in a uh a found in this house renovation and it, a lot of it looked like it was uh parts of a wireless or some sort of like machine device and then the base itself so the plan is to stick some things around the sides of it sorry just giving you an un unreasonable idea of how big it is so to stick some bits alongside it so that it's this kind of sunken watery gross world uh, which i'm going to use the xps foam to do so sticking loads of bits bits to it covering it in xps foam making a, a kind of like riverbed around it and then i'm not going to do it today but I, once this is this section is done opening up this will be a kind of cascade of resin coming out from it and that really is the 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 bit that i'm most well <laughs> the bit that i'm most trying to get get right so that's going to be interesting to do i'm going to do that with some of these lever arch arms and then some more of the xps foam but first i have this little guy that i made a while ago it's not very good the idea was that it would be a bit like the robots and love uh, Netflix series is like covered in jewellery it just has a little bit of gold what I'm going to try and do stick it upside down in this jar fill the jar full of gross liquid seal the jar with my glue gun and then stick this like this or well something like that so that you can sort of see it once it's all done I'll paint most of it but the idea is they're going to have lots of things on here and then stuff around Okay. So if you've got any questions at any point, just chuck them in the chat and then I'll reply to you as soon as I see them and my brain works. Right, let's check this out. My apologies for any of the like shitness of this <laughs> it's the first time i've done it so let's see how it goes <laughs> okay cool right so basically this has to fit in like that so it's not quite gonna fit so let's get some clippers and just take this off here Um, I'm still going to go, maybe it's that top bit that's, I think it will look fine at that branch of the arm. Morning meandering shade. <laughs> you had exactly that drinks trolley. Yeah, I think uh, I, when I when I went to look for them, there were like quite a few, I've always wanted to have one and there were quite a few of them for sale and they were all like extremely bad quality and like with fairly ruined bits on it so, <laughs> so it wasn't like it wasn't like absolutely ideal but yeah it's not too bad like uh, the the lid was pretty broken and how was you how what problems did you have with yours okay so we're gonna make a potion sort of mixture to pour into this. I do want this to all separate and stay liquid. 
Let's see what this looks like. Mm. Could be too diffuse. Let's have a look. Maybe some gross, contrasty, dark colour, black legion. The Gar Garagax sewer. Hey, mate, how's it going? Casual Army Painter. My very good friend <laughs> well at the moment uh, i'm just going to pour some liquid into this <laughs> and then dilute it and basically this is going to go on top of the kit batch model and the smash batch model and sit in a sort of like tank thing uh, so we'll see how this goes cool that looks nice and sludgy and disgusting Try and dilute it a little bit. Nice. Is that too completely opaque so you won't be able to see shit through it? Maybe. Pour a little tiny bit out. Mmm. Mm, delicious. Okay, so that is fine. Uh, the hinges are a little loose in danger of coming apart. Yeah, I had the same problem with the hinges. Like uh, when I unscrewed them to clean it all out, I actually cut my <laughs> like or cut my finger open on it. Um, so yeah, it is a little bit wonky. I also had to. I also had to sort of cover the top in glue because all of the the actual like attachments had come off um, and broken, and the same on the base as well. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I pretty much fixed that and I th I'm hoping that with all the shit that I'm going to attach to this It will basically keep this really solid and then this will have a rise on it uh, Probably well depending how much XPS foam I've got I, I want it to be about that high Then I'm going to cut into it and make a sort of river that go runs right the way across and there'll be like cascading water coming down here and then when you open it up yeah, you'll have this you'll have this kind of watery explosion. I hope. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see if it works. Hi mod time, how are you doing? Are you up to something interesting today? Okay. Pretty good. That's good. Let's have a look what this is looking like. Ah, yeah, super gross. So that's lovely. Um, it would be really nice just to... Oh, should I snap off the base? Maybe I can just snap off the base and put the lid on. Let's try this. You're working on an unclean one. You're right, that is a, that is a brilliant model. Absolute classic. Is it a kit bash or did you make it? Is it one of the jet various kits? Where's my super glue? Okay, so this fits that way. Could you add liquids of different valence valences? That's probably a pretty good idea. Um, so at the moment, I've got some acrylic paint, some contrast paint, a bit of oil. Uh, I might drop a bit of oil paint in it as well, because just to see what happens with that. <laughs> just to, to add to the toxicity. Uh, as always, enjoy that sort of thing. Let's see what happens. If I add some oil paint, I will go and get my oil paint. for some lovely Winston Newton oil kind of green. So you sculpt it. Very nice. What will happen if I just put this like lump? A bit weird to be starting off with this. I just I just like thought of it 
about two minutes before we started and then suddenly realized that if i didn't do it now it'd be really difficult like i want to attach them as soon as possible so i really don't want to i really want this filled and sealed so that i can glue it straight on done a couple of like live kit bashes before and they were just mostly just doing little models and they were quite <laughs> it was quite stressful trying to like do an entire kit bash in eight hours so i'm going to see how far we get with the structure i'm not 100 sure we'll do the full model today but we'll see how it goes right plop you back in come on you back up Yeah, a little bit of olive oil's in there as well. Okay. Cool. I'm then gonna use some of my glue gun glue to try and seal it so that when I when it sits in my room for like the rest of my life, it doesn't all leak out and go all gross. Well, it's gonna look fantastically weird. Nice. Depending on what angle it is at, that's fun. Get my glue gun out. Do, 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 do. Is anyone else working on anything today? Until that's heated up a little bit. So the XPS uh, is not quite the right XPS foam. I wanted to get a much thicker, harder, thicker and harder version, uh, but <laughs> it turned up. So it's the, it's the stuff I'm going to be using. So which is this stuff here. So it is not hugely thick and quite like soft, which is very annoying. I might put my gloves on for this because it's gross. Dude. So let's cut just a bit. This is the most excessive knife to use for this, <laughs> but it is very sharp, so. Okay, so we basically have sheets like this. And then the idea is I'll pop it on here, build it around, attach it with the glue gun and build up layers and then I'll cut into it once it is finished. Oh, that is my camera mount broken. Nice, it's gonna make this really easy. Oh, nice. I really like the Vashtal model, it's absolutely beautiful. One of these things that like, GW just absolutely smashed it out of the park with that. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm just gonna have to sort another mount quickly because that fucking mount broke. One second. Get a lovely belly view. couple of months time I might actually have a little workshop to work in which I'm very excited about and I won't be having to like jiggle everything in my entire room around every time I want to do any modeling right okay so we've got one hot glue gun we've got some lots of glue sticks so I can keep going uh, I'm gonna cut it a little bit more first so that it is straight-ish. Now I want to leave 
enough of a gap so that the lid can keep opening but then when it comes down i can basically put something that's a bit wedged this side i think that's going to be easier as it as it goes along uh, i think that's the best way that it will work i'm probably going to angle this so that it's like a bit jagged so that it doesn't have like a completely straight side this well a curved side this side because i want it to really look like a river bank main reason I like this stuff as, as materials is because it's really cheap so it's like £10 for all this lot which is probably why it's not quite the right one to be honest how was making Vash tour was it was it worthwhile like was it so did you do any kit bashing or is it like just beautiful enough a kit to make as is Okay, yeah, I think this is going to work. Just make sure it's not... Should I cut that first? Maybe I should cut that first before I attach it on. Because... Or is that going to be really easy to cut later on? That is going to be really easy to cut later on. Okay, let's put that knife down there. Get my lovely glue gun. If there's anything you want to ask me about building stuff or like making things, I, I'm very happy to ask away. This is a nice 20 quid glue gun from Amazon. Luxury. That is a very specific reason I'm using glue gun glue on these and not <laughs> not anything else is because although it, it the heat can melt it a little bit, it doesn't uh super glue absolutely completely melts it. So whenever I've used it, I've like occasionally forgotten about that and used super glue and it has melted it. Hi Nyan Prow, how you doing? Where did I get the cool blue bits from? This stuff. Uh, it's basically it's just x it's xbs foam so it's like um uh it's like builder it's build people builders use it for ins insulation uh you can buy it on amazon there's loads of different ones the the one to get is the thicker stuff so it's like uh it's nearly three inches uh because it has like it's much more um it's much harder this is like a little bit spongy so i'm gonna to have to really cover this in mod podge and stuff to keep some structure and not be like falling apart but my giant tower so the giant tower that is all made of xps foam and the good thing about that is you can carve these really nice like steps into it you get this nice crumbly sort of texture um and it's a little bit harder so not quite the right stuff but um <laughs> i'll put a link i'll put a link to the right stuff next time so that you know you can get the right stuff the other thing i really like about it is it's very very lightweight so you can build huge things out of it uh and it's not going to add like much weight to this model at all whereas like once i start adding metal and glass <laughs> Uh, the metal and glass is obviously going to be a pain in the ass because it's heavy as anything. Oh, come on. Right, so next glue bit. Oh, nice. So Vastral's deceptively tall. <laughs> uh, I tend to I tend to make all my models on like extremely large bases and although that's I like visually really like it uh, there is a little bit of a pro it does make them 
well, as my friends say, like incredibly easy to hit. <laughs> so it's uh, it's yeah. So they're always quite difficult to hide. But I think it's better. It's more dramatic if you've got like a massive great creature that's like, absolutely enormous. I think once this is three layers, I'm going to do it three layers high and that will be high enough to build the like river bank out of. Uh, it's going to be the first time I, I found this paintbrush for like a pound <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use these as reeds, which I've not done before, but I've seen loads of people do and I think it looks really nice. So if you don't know, the theme for this year is brackish birth, uh, <laughs> which I think, I think stumped a lot of people straight away, because partially because of the word brackish, but also like the, the sort of watery theme. Um, so th this particular thing that I'm making is going to have, it's kind of based on like the idea of those legends and religious stories about like throwing orphans in the river and then floating down and then finding like some and then and then finding some place that they are like immediately after birth so there'll be a character up the top here that's quite grotesque and then there'll be lots of little things floating around and lots of like weird uh what's the word weird coastal bayou kind of mutant things <laughs> i quite like the idea that this is going to be part of like a hold of a uh the part of the hold of a what's it called a space hulk uh and then you have this entire like ecosystem world that nobody knows exists and nobody cares about but it does exist okay shannon the blue stuff So it's bent a little bit, which is annoying. Well, we'll see if I can. I think we'll be able to fix that. What's my favourite non-Warhammer reading? So I really like uh, I really like horror short stories. So something like Robert Aikman's one of my absolute favourites. Uh, there's there's sort of five or six books you re you when you're reading them you realize like how many horror authors have taken uh, like reference for it they're they're not like overtly very frightening but they're just so unsettling that they create this like wonderful feeling uh, and more of that is kind of something like Robert W Chambers The King in Yellow uh, <laughs> it's slightly Warhammer appropriate but uh, yeah I really like finding that kind of collections of short stories Cold Hand and Mine is so good yeah you're right. Uh, one of the other ones is Arthur Macken. I don't know if you've come across him. He's got a collection called The Great God Pan. And uh, yeah, I'm a massive fan of that. There's loads of there's loads of them on eBay because I think they reissued them a few years ago and nobody bought them. <laughs> so all the people bought them and are reselling them. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's worth checking out. But I like I like sort of weird, eerie folklore, folk horror. Before I got back into 40k i think like probably sort of folk horror and uh was was my main <laughs> my main source of like uh inspiration and entertainment okay that's not i need to glue that more the problem with this glue gun is that the glue sticks are very short so it just runs out really quickly <laughs> has anyone got any book recommendations <laughs> 
Love you, uh, Stephen Corbett. Thank you. It says love your work and looks pretty. It's gonna be insanely great build. I really hope so. I've got really, I've got like no time at all to build it because I'm still like hacking away trying to paint Gilliman. So really, it's like I'm gonna this. I'm just trying to smash this out as fast as humanly possible, basically. Which uh, you know, I think I think is doable. We've got a long time today, so that should be fun. Right, still opens. Cool. Got some more bits. Uh, have I read any? Oh, it's upholstery foam. Uh, okay. I did Yeah, my my sister bought this for me. I asked for XPS foam, and it came instead. So, it still seems to be fine. I'm gonna cover it in loads of shit, so that will um, uh, that will make all the difference. I have not read any Ligotti. Have you got any? Is it Ligotti? Have you got any recommendations for collections or books? Is it? Is, I, I've, not, I've never heard of him actually. So or her. Tesco is insanely good, great collection of shorts. Okay, cool. I will check those out. I always, always, always looking for stuff to read. Um, it has been really, I mean, it has been really good to kind of getting back into the hobby and like reading the Black Library books. Um, I just finished the Iron Kingdom, if anyone's reading the Dawn of Fire series. <laughs> portals of Death. Yeah, Portals of Death, exactly what you want. These too too wide. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing. Ubik by Philip K. Dick. Yeah, that's a fantastic story. And Vi Vice and Hickman. Oh, I've not heard of either of those. So one of the things I'm trying to do as well is I'm not cutting these. I'm not trying to cut these like really straight or anything and the part of the reason for that is uh, the more you can possibly avoid right angles in your dioramas or your your kit bashing or your models um there's something that the unless it's a sort of building in a corridor and even then there's something that really gives it a sense of it the fact that it's a set of toys and not and it's not and it's not real so the the number one thing i talk to people about when i'm talking to them about like changing the way that or like in, improving the way that they kit bash and make dioramas is, is to make sure you don't have any 90 degree angles everything is off like a, a weird angle or it's like broken you're just constantly breaking up shapes so you're not square on I have read the Annihilation books. Uh, they are an enormous <laughs> source of source of um, inspiration for me. I absolutely love them. I love the world. I love the world building. I love how weird it is. I think they are, are like generally pretty frightening as well. All of the uh, the stuff with the crawler and um, I think although the film, I, I like, I really like the film as well, and it did capture that sense of. Um, that sense of like uncontrolled change i felt that maybe it didn't quite um it wasn't it wasn't as terrifying as as i don't know is it, you know things aren't always as ter terrifying as you imagine them to be okay how am i gonna do this i think i'm gonna have to move this Has anyone else read Annihilation, the Annihilation series, uh, or the Southern Reach trilogy, as it's called? It really is like one continuous book rather than um, uh, set, rather than like individual. Yeah, I think I'm on my like third or fourth read through. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, I uh, I kind of religiously read the Black Library releases. Um, they did get to a point of being of just kind of continuously releasing great books. <laughs> I think last summer and the release schedule's been a bit slower this year, so I'm like. I've kind of lost it. It's just a bit, it, it, it was just so enjoyable kind of like reading book after book after book and finding like nip, like tiny bits of lore and stuff in them that makes you feel like you're the chosen one who can work out these like obvious <laughs> things that they've come up with to try and trick you into thinking certain things. But I'm very, very excited about the second end and the death book although somebody pointed out the other day that maybe it's not going to be two books because they've only said that it will be more than one so my tin four hats got on maybe thinking that it's going to be three books <laughs> so, uh, i mean it makes it kind of I, I didn't think that they dragged out much of the end of the death maybe like some section of it Rumour is working on the fourth one. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that'd be really cool. I'd like that. Yeah, Nate Crowley's books are great. I think everyone's got their sort of favourite. It's nice having lots of different styles and like, I, really, I suppose what I always want is variety as much as possible. <laughs> so. Okay, is that going to go? Any good 40s psycho horror show books that I should read? I uh, look up the look up um the like Warhammer sh like 40k short story uh I forgot what they're called. They they had like a horror anthology and they had a couple of books set in um like a like on ships and abandoned mining stations and they I think they're for sale for about a quid. Uh they do so yeah, they they I mean they're very short reads but they are worth checking out. Did I miss the end of the death chat? <laughs> no, we could carry on talking about that if you want. <laughs> uh, just to make sure that everyone has read it first, because I don't want to spoil anything for people. Because it is, you know, as a as a as somebody who got into the hobby in nineteen ninety six, it is very very exciting that finally like these events are coming to pass, and you're gonna get you're gonna get the big big reveal of whatever happened at the end in the vengeful spirit, which I'm hyped for. <laughs> Uh, you're not sure what to do with Smash Bash this year. If you've got any suggestions, uh, do, what what cat? I think the first thing to do is work out what category you want to enter in, because th there's quite a difference in the sizes this year. And pick one of the sizes. Um, like obviously, I'm going for Colossal Conglomerate, which has infinite. You can use any size because uh, I wanted to go big, but that all kind of. Like the others have got quite big, strong, strong size restrictions on them. So they might, you know, if you're thinking about making a single character, then it's, I can't remember what this, the actual name of it is. But it does have a, a very specific name and then that, that will hopefully kind of like help you inform what you're going to build. I think I'm going to run out of foam. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to run out of foam. That was very annoying. I thought I had enough. If you use this foam in the future, you find it easier to sit together using a can of spray glue for bonding foam, carpets, etc. will be a stronger bond and faster use. Nice. Okay. Well, th thanks, mate. Because <laughs> I thought it was a completely different material. I think that is that is incredibly helpful. So, um, <laughs> cheers. I, like, once it's done, I'm going to make a sort of PVA rock glop uh, and then slather it all over it so it will hopefully bond it a bit more but also um yeah seal it so once once i start painting it all oh, this doesn't seem too bad it's gonna it's quite solid so far just don't really have enough of it lord shader says hey hey lord shader always lovely to talk to you <laughs> you're about 25 percent into it okay uh <laughs> well in which case we'll probably 
we will probably leave it for a bit and uh, and talk about the end of the, the death when one went i would love to do, i'd love to maybe do like a sort of book not book report but like a round table thing about it because uh it's i find it is hugely exciting like it's the it's kind of pinnacle of the, the hobby story for me Okay, that seems all working well. Uh, sorry to hear that your internet's been bad, meandering shade. I'm I'm concerned that my my internet here is terrible. So uh, if it does cut out and stuff like that, <laughs> I have pretty much no way of knowing until I watch it back back <laughs> eventually. So we'll see how it goes. And hey, Chris Bates Minis, nice to see you. All I want is a master spreadsheet of Abnet's insane objective game. Yeah, you probably can get one. I th uh, like. I think did uh, Miri Miri Manga did an interview with him recently, which was really good. Uh, <laughs> I also love that, like you know, just the the sort of willingness to engage with. Uh, I suppose she's pretty. She is a pretty big creator, actually. Uh, Anyone going to Warhammer Fest? Okay, let's just get square. Stick it this way. And that piece go on here. Chris Plates Minis, very, very exciting. I'm very excited. Uh, the guy who got me back into the hobby is coming with me. Uh, and so that, so it feels it feels like a really great time. Uh, there's so many awesome people going to it. Ooh. Sorry. There's so many great people going to Warhammer Fest. And it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an absolute blast. There's like... I'm looking forward to trying out 10th edition. Apparently all the like new, um, what's that, that new like Bolter Hell kind of uh, 90s. Sorry, I'm just fucking around with the clamp again. All of the like computer games are gonna be demos to play. I'm a bit broke, so I haven't really spent any money on any of the like extra tickets and extra like events and stuff. So I'm not going to do any of the tournaments or uh, other stuff like that. But it'd be cool. Yeah, Bolt Gun, that's the one. <laughs> I mean, Bolt Gun just looks, I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I'm sure it's not going to be like the most enormously long lived game, but you know, for a for spending a few hours like fucking around shooting the shit out of stuff it's going to be absolutely amazing wow this is looking particularly gross Ooh. okay nice right so we're just going to seal this oh cool it'd be nice to yeah it'd be nice to say hello to your wife too too uh <laughs> we're very normal people it's, it's a normal thing it's all good um I did talk, I talked to my missus about maybe coming and she was just like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, like, you know, it's nice to, it was nice to offer, but the thing is, she doesn't, she hasn't, she hasn't got any interest in the hobby. She is very, very supportive of it. Uh, although, maybe slightly getting to the end of uh, the amusement of having all these things in our bedroom. So hopefully later on this year. Well, hopefully soon I'll move and I'll be able to have a bit more hobby space that won't be my living space. I'll be able to paint with toxic paints without worrying that I'm going <laughs> to drown us. Not drown us, what's the word? Uh, poison us in our sleep. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. It's like a reverent fun. <laughs> it does. It really does. I think there's something about uh, like 90 shooters perfectly match up to 40k bit of nostalgia well, a lot of nostalgia actually right. 
Okay, so let that dry. And then we'll go back onto the main model. See anything else in the chat? Yeah, I'm really interested to see. Really interested to see what it's going. The event's going to be like. I haven't. Um, I haven't really been to. I haven't. Well, I've been to Salute, which which is coming up on the 22nd. I'm, I'm going to be going to as well, but probably just for a couple of hours. Say hello to a few people. And um, yeah, excited to see what's what happens. Right, Chris, what we're currently working on is this. So this is going to be my Smash Bash entry. Ooh, I don't know what's happening there. This is going to be the Smash Bash entry. So I'll be building up layers of foam irregularly. Uh, I'm going to now add some foam to the actual top of this as well so that it's kind of up to here. And then we're going to cut all these pieces so that it creates like one whole structure. I'm just waiting on my gross, gross tank of goop to well just to seal so that I can turn this upside down and stick it to the model so that it's like part of these tanks so I've got this one I've got this one which I'm just going to put some of uh where is it gone there's a wire that I'm going to put into it which looks nice and then coming over here we've got these real treasures this is like manna from heaven I love this stuff so the bits of old, I think these are bits of old, uh, like wireless radio, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, love old bits of rusty metal, always really good. <laughs> so, so, if you could kind of think that this will be a sort of swamp with buried machinery sticking out of it. Um, of unknown origin and then various different creatures and things sitting around it with on top and this is the bit where if you if you're having a bit of problem with smash like this is kind of this helped inform it a lot these are b starian models you've got this beautiful spider lady with a sort of spider baby corpse thing and she is going to go bang on top here with a shitload of cabling and stuff coming out of her back and joining her to the rest of the machinery because she is part of some ancient machine that is birthing these weird spider creatures that's the idea sort of and as we go uh like bits of the materials will keep um informing it so i found this i buy lots of costume jewelry i found this and i think it's like uh it i think it'll make like really nice egg pods of some description so I might do these on one of the riverbeds or it might might be some other section and then have enormous amount of like cabling uh like industrial cabling so yeah we'll see how that <laughs> we'll see how that goes oh yeah there it is yeah so this stuff is just going to go in here with maybe a few other things and this will be mostly painted so that you just see kind of glimpses through at this like rust maybe some of the rusty stuff yeah we'll see actually maybe we'll start making that yeah she's very yeah very cool so like i really like these starian models they are absolutely amazing and a friend of mine has just started working with them so uh i'm getting some cheap ones which is nice Once the heresy ends, um, difficult, difficult to know. Like I, I really want, like I love stuff in the current setting. Like I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy bits that kind of move the story on or have like different. Oh, there we go. Really <laughs> great. You're here. Hello, mate. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the sorting the models for me. Like they are just uh, an absolute joy, and I'm really, really excited about using them. Um, I'm going to be using a mixture of uh, uh Beastarium. Beastarium. I'm going to be using a mixture of their models, some of the Swamp GW ones, some Warpath stuff, uh, and just various different bits in my like various sprue collections. Um, 
and trying to use up some of these like endless, endless, endless parts that I've got. This looks like I'm building a bomb. Yeah, the Beckwin books. Oh my God, so good. And just like one of those things where just absolutely no one appeared to read them. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was so excited to talk to people about them. And then uh, everyone I, I tried to speak to about it was just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and you don't want to you don't want to spoil it for anyone. But also it's difficult if you're not going to read everything. OK, what does that look like? That's kind of fun. <sighs> Question is, is it going to be okay if I don't paint it? Maybe I'll just put more gloop in it. I could just put more gloop in it. I don't have a sealed lid for this one, but I'm sure we could find some sort of base for it. Yeah, I like, I'm absolutely blown away by the, the sculpt quality. The other one I got, which I'm not using, which I've wanted and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some sort of maybe a man of iron out of this. Is this lad? And just what an <laughs> what an absolutely beautiful beautiful bit of sculpting. Like uh, it's just the it, it's it's super clear. I mean, like okay, it's got a tiny bent bit, but it's totally fine. That's yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I have not played dredge. What uh, I've not come across it. What is it? Age of Apostasy would be cool. Um, is it the what was the what was the cursed founding? Was it the second founding or the twenty first or something? There was a cursed founding of Space Marines, and like something went wrong with the maybe it was chaos, but something went wrong with the gene seed and they all ended up being like very odd and i loved that it was great fun cthulhu miss cthulhu mythos fishing game oh amazing that sounds really fun yeah i'll check that out um in my gaming group i'm pretty much the only well basically everyone relies on me to to kind of organize and like well maybe not completely but to 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 kind of learn make sure that i know all the rules and all that sort of side of it so a lot of the time i can't really be bothered to learn a new rule system and teach everyone how to use it it's just a huge hassle i'm using my fa like these snips because they're broken old tamiya ones i've got some fancier ones somewhere else that i keep nicer Annoying doing this about a point. Oh, it's a video game. Oh, cool. It sounds very cool. Um, I'm not much of a gamer, to be honest. Like, uh, I do, I like them a lot, but the problem is that then I don't do anything else than play games. <laughs> and, you know, this, hob this hobby takes up, like, more than enough of my time, to be honest. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a trade-off Right, I need some sort of seal for the base of it, so this stuff sticks on it. Maybe we have some blue tack that I could use, and then we'll have to use some sort of metal lid. Okay. Take my gloves off for a moment. Yeah, so I've also got these um, bits of plumbing valves which I think are going to look really nice on top of stuff, on top of the, to make it look a bit Akira-ish, which is always an effect that I like a lot. Okay, so maybe we use this as a base. No, it's not very flat. Where's my base section?
it's short, short, sweet, and creepy. But I understand your point. Procrastination. Well, if it's yeah, if it's a short game, I, I just have I have a predilection. I really like um, I really like RPGs, uh, long especially JRPGs, and as long as I possibly can play them. And yeah, I just get stuck into it and don't do anything other than play RPGs all day, uh, which is not very good for me for my mental health. Oh, I can't find this bit. Okay, just looking for something round to fit. Well, you think you've saved every bit of plastic in the world, and then you realise you haven't. Okay, this might work. This is an old cap for. Yeah, I think that'll work. Put it like that. Oh, there's more inside the metal sections. Yeah, so I'd lo I'd love to play I'd love to play the new Diablo Four when it comes out, but all I will do is play Diablo Four and nothing else, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's emotionally emotionally bad for me. Maybe I can get some paint in the individual pets. That is a good idea. Okay. So what we're going to do is say, let's get some Biotan Green. For a bit. Is everyone excited about the Lion release? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I am going to immediately buy that model. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm hoping that the Lion book has got some really uh, interesting lore and uh, images in it, and I can build something based on one of those. Oh, there's alien egg toys. Yeah, those were cool, weren't they? Okay. Uh, what should we go next? Let's go. One of these. I don't know. All this stuff is very expensive, but um, since I I bought so many, I bought so many various different Citadel paints. And since I switched to doing oil painting, I don't really use them. I use them. I use them for like highlights or like technical effects or things. Um, but for the bulk of my painting, I just use oil colours, which I vastly prefer. To be honest, it's like much easier to much easier to you know wet blending doesn't take ages. The consistency is really nice, and it's and it's super cheap. I mean, I bought one set for twenty quid, and yeah. <laughs> no work today uh lionel lionel he yeah, is such a great model i am so unbelievably hyped about getting up my hands on him like i you know i wasn't it's difficult isn't it because you you don't know you don't know if you're i don't know what i was expecting uh and then it was sort of everything that i could possibly expect and more it really was like just an absolutely wonderful 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 model Okay. 
<laughs> oh, cheers, mate. Thank you so much for the <laughs> money. Uh, a one-one replica out of the rock out of Peter. <laughs> I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Um, I have, I have some like hail mary. I'm just gonna have a little, little sit down because I'm. Uh, let's do this the other way around. <sighs> I'm just get some water and sit down. Um, I have some like Hail Mary, Mary projects where I need money, space, <laughs> and time, and uh, to a to a level that I don't have at all. Uh, one of them is if you've read the, uh, I think it's called it's something Throne. What is it? it no, D the Dark City book in the Watchers of the Throne series. There is such a good description of the entirety like the entire schematics of the golden throne and it makes it kind of about i suppose in 40 it, it, it's it's like titanic it's it, you know the throne room itself is such a tiny part of it and it just goes on and on forever up and down in all directions it's it's vast and then the end of the death did a really good description of traveling through all the chambers as well so uh my dream project is to basically make the golden throne but in part of the full throne the full full mechanism uh but i, <laughs> I either need G gw or someone else to hire me <laughs> to make that because i just certainly don't have space for it uh could you add battery operated waterproof led lights uh that's a that no that's a really good idea um I think I'm probably going to attach them today because I just want to get on with it. But what I might do is leave a small space like to the back and underneath them. What I'm going to do with these, what I'm going to do with these is they will be like the whole, most of the out, 90% of the outside will be painted. There will just be like grime marks where you can slightly see through. So if there is like a point of light, it will, that would be, that would look really cool. That's a great shot. Uh, which piece of the Emperor's war gear he'll have? <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah, like the Emperor's hair. <laughs> he hasn't got any hair anymore, so maybe that fell out, and you know, you made it. Somebody's knitted it. A custodian has knitted it into a wig. <laughs> I quite like the idea of that. Um, yeah, I, I I was really surprised at the Emperor's shield, uh, especially going back and looking at all the artwork of his him depicted because he has got it like it is in all of it is in every kind of image of him it's just his little shoulder pauldron so that's kind of cool for the scale as well um yeah a bit disappointing in the rules but i i mean who cares like 10th edition's around the corner the rules don't really mean anything at this point i don't think <laughs> so, uh wouldn't it just be a bunch of loose rocks yeah that's a good point the rock would be just you know rubble <laughs> so that'd be fun i think with the lion i was kind of hoping for a baroque image uh, similar to Gilliman to make there's one with him with Angron but I've already got I've already got an Angron build planned uh, and I can kind of see somebody I could kind of, I could see people just racing ahead and picking that model up and and just doing that straight away um so I'm hoping that the lion book itself has got some artwork that's either a bit more dramatic or they're really doubling down this idea of him being sort of uh, you know, this sort of spirit f coming out from trees. So I've been looking at some like Arthurian legend art and um, like sort of not Renaissance stuff, but uh, like pre Raphaelite and maybe like really heavily lean into that sort of long flowing hair and a dragon or, you know, the kind of equivalent. Um, so that'd be, that'd be quite interesting, but I definitely want to make something. Uh, do, 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 do. There is an app like Photo you can put up projects. People can contribute project funds to whatever project they love the sound of. But I like it, like that idea. That sounds really cool. Um, yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> so, um, did I love the Golden Demon recreation recreation of the battle on the vengeful spirit? That is, for me, that is one of those models. I saw that in White Dwarf, in like where however many years ago. It was the most exciting piece of like it came. I think it came with the small amount of text about the history of uh, what happened on the vegetable spirit, and that is like mythos mythos making. Just made me so excited about the hobby. It was so, it, like and that possibility of making things completely from scratch. These aren't models you could buy. Every single part of it. I remember looking at all of the um, 
uh, scroll work on the Emperor's armor and just thinking like how did anyone how did anyone do that and definitely one of my absolute highlights was going to see uh, going to Warhammer World and seeing that 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 model there because I'd spent so many hours looking at it um, and yeah so massive inspiration and uh, oh god my brain I, I'm not very awake today but the the artist is on instagram he makes more stuff i think he's going to be at warhammer fest so <laughs> i'll be keeping an eye out for him uh if anyone can remember what the artist's name is because it's very embarrassing i can't remember it because he is like the godfather of dioramas <laughs> so <laughs> we'll find it what it is uh yeah wizened like hern from robin hood I, th I feel like robin hood maybe is quite i wasn't i didn't think that they were going to go down that route for the lion i don't know why but they really like really kind of getting into that whole section of him being this wild forest man fine yeah let's go let's go with that it's fun <laughs> okay cool right, i'm gonna get back to you hi greg 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 sorry man i was saying all day wrong. Doo, 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 doo. okay so these are looking they have nice they have kind of gone down a little bit they will probably settle more and then they'll slide back up so we want to make this liquid <laughs> Probably more of it for a start. Mike Mike McVeigh, I cannot 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 believe that I forgot his name. Yeah, he's on Instagram. Um, he's still making stuff. Like, uh, I can't. But yeah, he his work is the biggest inspiration to me of any type. And I think it's that that sense of uh, it, that sense of it almost being like capturing a moment perfectly. Well, not, not necessarily perfectly, but just capturing your imagination so much. Uh, like, I'm hugely indebted to him. Ooh, that's looking nice. <laughs> if I could get it just to stay like that, that would be nice. <sighs> Maybe I don't mix it at all. Just let it... But I think it will just... I think the pigment is slowly diff diffusing. Oh, that looks beautiful, though. Beautiful and gross. What else can I put into it to make it disgusting? Probably some oil. What have we got? We've got... Yeah, maybe let's just put some Viridian green into it. Sam L, you were too. <laughs> well, uh, does it make me feel old at all? Oh, no, I mean, like, you know, uh, how old uh, how old was I? Like, seven, eight? You know, it really was kind of... Or maybe nine years old. I'm enjoying this because it's kind of potluck. I don't know what it's going to end up looking like. It might just all completely separate and just be very boring. Got all his old solo studio mini still waiting collection. That's that's amazing. I'd love that. Like, what a like absolutely like honor to have some of his models. Okay, when is the next stage of your entry uh, being shown? Oh, I didn't get in. So that's that's it, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> it wasn't full of asbestos but yeah sadly sadly we didn't get in so yeah we'll try again next year see how it goes <laughs> it was it was really joy like i really i really enjoyed the process of kind of like entering but um yeah sadly me or uh um graham didn't get in. gareth okay right so now we're gonna push this down hope that the water doesn't overspill See where that fits. Nice, I think that's okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, shit, it's pulled on. Okay, so now we're going to need glue gun again. And then we've got a glue gun that on. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I think it was a really, I think it was a really fun thing to, a fun thing to do. And we're going to keep doing it probably every year. I think, um, I don't know if you, any of you guys follow Encounter Terrain. Um, 
is amazing kind of like terrain builder and he is going to be entering next year uh there's yeah there's a load uh, and a couple of other hobby people i know and i think want to try and make it a bit of a like not take over exactly <laughs> but just you know keep entering it until one of us gets in can you see what i'm doing probably not yeah i've done I, um one of the things i find most interesting is how there's a sort of age split about people who are public with their hobby and people who aren't. And I tend to find that people over 30, uh, or people who were in the hobby around 20 years ago <laughs> and are now getting back into it, tend to be a lot more reticent because they, they feel like there's some social stigma with uh, being a Warhammer or collecting toy soldiers. And... And then sort of I tend to find that younger people don't get, don't care. Like they're just like super happy to, to be to chat about it. And my missus is really helpful with this because she's just she her view is if it's something that you love and that you're good at and that you enjoy, why wouldn't you be proud of it? Like and she's completely right. It's it's it, you know, it's a weird thing, but weird things are cool. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think the definitely the online communities really help because you just see how many extra other people are involved in it. Because it can be quite difficult if you're like, I don't know, if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no gaming group and there's no specific shop for it. <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah, there, I mean, yeah, there were, there hundred percent was a social stigma for it, like. Um, and I think, you know, that's the sort of thing that, that, you know, you only have to look at like the daily, I think there's the daily mash does a, does a, uh, Art Warhammer nerds weird article like once every month. Um, but it's, but I love it because it's always really specific and I just think, oh, well, you know, whoever's writing this actually probably is a Warhammer fan. You only look at like some of the interviews of Henry Cavill and, you know, like how incredibly dismissive of, of him they are. And it's really nice to see him just like basically take the piss out of them because, you know, there's nothing there's nothing less cool than like thinking you're too cool to like stuff. Ah, uh, nice. The amount that you, yeah, people you secretly, secretly thought had been into Warhammer. That that's a real funny one. Like, my buddy's in the army, and I swear that like, there's so many of them that are into it, and like a lot of them hide it. <laughs> and so he's 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 come across people like endlessly that he didn't realise were into it. And it's yeah, I think it's really cool. Okay. I'll wait for that to dry and then I'm going to do another layer on it. See how that goes. Did they really ask you if you wanted a plain carrier bag? That's amazing. Yeah, I think I think really like I found it really genuinely interesting to watch. Like, I think the Graham Norton one's the best one because he sort of tries to, you know, he's taking the piss out of everyone, but he, he so specifically tries to, to target it in that. It, you know it, that it's that it's like deeply sad that this guy is into this thing uh and you know it's like well no <laughs> like people having hobbies is a really positive thing unless you make it your entire personality and you're a massive dick about it but like <laughs> being interested in things is great i like it a lot who runs the world nerds nerds yeah we really do Okay, so I'm going to wait for those to dry, and then we're going to come back over here to this and do the next bit on here. Okay, I will get a better script set up for streaming. When I move house. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
No way, Ansel Elgort won a Golden Demon. What? Did he? <laughs> Is that true? That's wild. I have absolutely no idea. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, so I think this. Uh, I think I might have to unscrew some of these bits, to be honest, because it's too big. Am I going to get these bolts off? Am I going to be able to get these bolts off with this? So I'm just debating about what to do with this, this part. I really want these on it, but I think I'm going to have to unscrew them because I think this single piece of metal is too... <sighs> What's that going to look like? Is that going to look shit? Mm, I think that'll look quite shit. Okay. So instead, let's go for some of these. You know, a few people who tried to hide being in a hobby. Yeah, I think it's. I think. I think it's really difficult. Like, um, I think it's. I think uh, maybe it's. Maybe it's changed a lot in the last few years. To be honest, like, people just are more accepting of, uh, of people being interested in things. Okay, so if these go here, I think I'm going to put want to put one of the water tanks there, and then maybe like that. Okay, I think that'll look maybe like that. Okay, I think that'll look good. Hi, Scoffio. Uh, the plan for this is this is my Smash Bash entry. So I'm building up this foam around it so that I can cut into it and make a river bank all the way around. This is going to open up and have some resin coming out of the top, although I haven't got the resin for it yet, so uh, I'm not going to do that today. And then on the top of the model, oh shit, maybe I've done this a little bit too tight. And then on the top of the model, there's going to be this creature and then like bits of an old factory and then lots of like weird marsh creatures around it. So yeah, we'll see how, see how it goes. I'm just trying to work out where to position everything at the moment. Yeah, I mean, my, my 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 the friend who got me got us back into it, it was one of our school friends, and basically he had got into it a couple of years before, painted up this like beautiful beautiful Blood Angels army, and this um, what else did he done? Uh, a World Eaters army as well, and they were like stunning, like absolutely stunning, and he hadn't really told us because he thought you know he thought we'd probably take the piss out of him and i just remember thinking oh shit yeah we might have done but actually this is really cool you know your work is stunning like you should be really proud of it and then we went i went home to my parents house and found that i still had some of the warhammer in the attic i got it out and then it kind of <laughs> spiraled absolutely spiraled from there but i'm very glad that it did very glad that it did is this going to look better if it is at an angle? Yeah, it's going to look better if it's an angle. Okie dokie. Will the creature resemble the bear from Annihilation? Prob oh, fuck. Probably not. It's going to be based on this uh, Madonna-esque figure who's also got spider legs. And then that's going to have um, lots of cabling coming out, attaching to the kind of factory sections. She'll sit up there on top. Uh, I'm trying to sort of fit in for the brackish birth idea. And so it's going to be this like watery underworld of old factories and I, I like um i really like post-apocalyptic places where you've got uh the 
where the world is built upon like something that was advanced in the future. A bit like the land of Ooh. Another brass pipe. Maybe inside it. Yeah, I think that looks nice. So I'm just going to stir like that and it's right. Is anything in the chat? Like an anthropomorphic <laughs> bio cyber horror alien queen. Yeah, yeah, why not? That sounds good. I've got some like things I'm going to use some eggs as well, so that would be really good. <laughs> Sadly, the it didn't come with any, it didn't come with any um blue bottles, it didn't come with any bottles of alcohol. Do you have any tips for dealing with the strings? Um, make things that it doesn't matter that there's strings on them. I think is like, I'm gonna have a lot of, like what I want from this is as much texture as possible. I'm always looking for kind of like wild, um, like you can kind of see with the tubes at the moment, they're tubes, they don't look that interesting. What I really want to add to this is lots of detail on the, on these things so they look much more like they're industrial and having kind of like l bits of old bits of this horrible like glue string around like I think add to that more than anything as long as they're not actually hanging off uh, my deadline for the, <laughs> my deadline for this is April the 29th so <laughs> I'm trying to trying to get as much of it built as possible today so that I can get on with it Yeah, I thought I was gonna do. I thought I was gonna do more of a, a fantasy style, um, and then I couldn't really face it, to be honest. Like, uh, I think like my last, you know, last Smash Bash was was much more of a sort of fantasy piece, and I really am more comfortable with kind of gross, broken science fiction, to be honest. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, re layers, depth, and greebling, they are really the key. The more stuff is the possible. Um, a few people, uh, I talked to a few people about making stuff and how that, when you're building big things, that it is in some ways a lot easier than building uh, individual models because there's so much more space you can hide, like mistakes and issues. Right. Oh, shit. Ah. Uh, do I have a creative background? <laughs> Not really. Like, I just love, I love stories. Um, uh, I'm uh, I like hyper fixate on things a lot so uh, <laughs> once I get into something I really get into it in a big way and I love uh, I've always loved science fiction fantasy eerie things horror different worlds and what when I first got back into 40k it really was it was to game it was the whole point was to, to do it socially and then once like lockdown happened i like i like kit bashing anyway but once lockdown happened i really just kind of thought well there are a few people's work that i saw one of which is tom taylor biggs who does sons of ananta and he just had these unbelievably amazing harlequins and i suddenly realized i was like oh shit right you can just make things however you want there's no 
there there is absolutely no rule like just use any material and now at the moment particularly like i'm absolutely broke so <laughs> trying to use up anything that i have to hand or i can find or i can get for free is really the way that i'm going so <laughs> I have to be I have to be quite quite creative with it oh thanks man uh yeah the tower i think this or was it was it the last video was it the was it this sorry that got it sort of stacked up or was it the tower i mean the tower is i uh, annoyingly like the top of it Whoop. The top of it snapped off because I stabbed it into the ceiling this morning. <laughs> so, it is a little bit annoying trying to keep these things in the house. Yeah, thanks, mate. I think ent entering Smash Bash as well has been has been such an enormous help with all this because uh, when I read the original like brief, it basically said the whole po the whole point of it was to be creative. Uh, like you know and what because i don't feel like uh, I'm, I'm not very confident in my painting i don't f maybe because i just looked at too many kind of golden demon winners and stuff and um it's something that i don't feel like i can be i really want to do but when it's like when when you're like entering competition and the plan is just to be as wild as possible i'm like yeah that's great yeah we can go for that roof nope okay let's leave that for a little bit to sell yeah that's a good that's a good shout I, i'm i do like i won't say that i don't get sent a lot of stuff because i do get sent a lot of stuff and that is definitely one of the best parts of it like uh i know a couple of people who are like competition gamers and they they don't um they don't kit bash at all so and they've got like multiple armies so they've just collected this huge amounts of spare bits and i do sort of mini commissions for them and swap it for kind of like this sort of this sort of thing <laughs> and a lot of it i don't need and you know i don't need as many orc bits <laughs> necessarily but it just having the volume of bits makes makes this kind of kit bashing a lot easier because it's once i get to the stage of adding detail i can add so much uh so far i've made everything on my model but i'm not sure if i should use gw bits what do you think um tell you what why didn't you why don't you uh do you follow me on instagram or twitter or something why don't you dm me a picture of it and i'll have a look uh it's cool if you make it all with stuff that you 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 know you've got like if you're if you're sculpting it from scratch that is super cool <laughs> so, <laughs> i really like that idea <laughs> you've been sent whole armies wow Okay. Cool. I'll get get myself a PO box then. <laughs> that would be nice. I uh, like yeah because I've got this. I've got this plan for. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the Angron, the the special edition Angron book book art. It's um, it's basically him standing on this big flame a big like bit of rock with loads of blood thirsters going up i saw that and i thought i could just instantly make this and i cost it up and it was about 150 pounds and i was like Pfft. i don't I currently have any space or time for it but that's definitely on my list of things to do but yeah no yeah i think that's i think that's a really cool idea i'm, I'm add that i did see the necron models just made out of sprue they were very cool I am going to grab some water. So you do a little miniature tour of my house. Water thing. My lovely hobby space. Cool. My umbrella.
kitchen slash living room, my sink. There you go. It's currently with we are packing up and buying stuff to move, so it's uh Here's Gilliman waiting for the moment where I can paint him again. And my new paint box for my old paints. Have to keep them out because it absolutely stinks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so good use, good use of sprue, those Necron things. I do use, um, uh, I use sprue mostly to make scaffolding. Um, so I make scaffolding out of the, so when I've got models that need to, that are very, very, um, what's the word? <laughs> that have defined gravity. I'll make a lot of scaffold out of sprue so I can kind of keep it together. Uh, if you ever come to Manchester, basic brush me, Benji's hobbies. Oh, amazing! That'd be really cool. Yeah, no, I'd love to. That'd be amazing. <laughs> okay, cool. I'd love to come on the podcast. That'd be absolutely super cool. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I've lost track a little bit. Do, are you going to Warhammer Fest as well? We could say hello. Yeah. Uh, Smash Bash this year, like I'm so behind. That's why I'm trying to do this to kind of get everything out in one, in one go. Like once I've built the basic structure, actually building small models doesn't take me any time. I always find that the biggest thing is is thinking about making things in advance and then getting too bogged in, down into what you want to do for it. Okay, mate. Yeah, I'll love to love that. I'll come. I'll come meet you for a beer. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Yeah, I think very easily can become a, a horrible, a horrible pit, your uh, your hobby space. Right, let's see if I think this one is all good. Yeah, it seems all good. I'm going to leave that upside down on a bit of water and a bit of tissue. Just to see if anything leaks out. And the other one. Okay, straight away leaks. Oop, where is it leaking from? That's a question. Uh, maybe it's just everywhere. Okay. Would have been a bit easier if I'd had a lid for this one, but it's just storing, storing spare old stuff. <laughs> Well, glad glad to hear it's on the way. Yeah, I hope your mental health is getting better. Um, it's a weird one. Like I find that the hobby improves my mental health enormously, but I also now spend all my time on social media doing stuff with mental, uh, doing stuff with the hobby, and that absolutely wrecks my social my mental health. So I have to just remind myself that the hobby is making stuff, and oh, the hobby is making stuff, and all the rest of it is just the uh fun it's just a it's just a bit extra okay so let's see if i can dry this off and then add another layer of glue oh you're visiting mini quest in germany tomorrow oh amazing that's really cool i've made so many cool friends on I made so many cool friends on like hobby socials, but I haven't really, I haven't met that many of them. Met a few people in London. Very embarrassingly haven't met Greg yet. And I feel awful because <laughs> uh, he's such a lovely guy. And there's just something about like living south of the river that makes it so difficult to visit or see people. But I think that maybe that's just psychological, not not anything real. Once we're all set, once I'm all set up in the new house, I like, will do lots more stuff. 
Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> I just feel awful. It's like... <laughs> The north is past Watford Junction. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm from Sussex, and so I grew up thinking the north was like anything north of, north of Den 25. Um, and, you know, now I live in North London, and everyone in South London thinks I live in the north. Where do I put my spare glue sticks? Okay. Oh, thanks, mate. That's very yeah, yeah. We're both to blame. We're both to blame for our lack of social social uh, social meeting up. It's just something about like living in London that just makes it impossible to meet any to go and actually see people. <laughs> I love. I mean, I do love it. I do love it here. It's very nice. I'm staying here, so it has lots lots of perks, but lots of downsides as well. Uh, but all the all the like cool hobby community in London live in South London, so you know, I'm slowly, slowly establishing some stuff in North London too. <laughs> and there is there is tell of a new gaming store opening up. Um, uh, some I think some guys are sort of now doing it, which would be really cool. But inevitably, it's going to be like in Walthamstow, which is a pain in the ass to, for me to get to. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yeah, can confirm that. What is the furthest? I suppose Germany's pretty far. What's the furthest you've met somebody in the hobby from? I think uh, I've got a great friend called Gary. He's um, uh, does it. He, his username is the Void Wind. So makes some amazing exodites and some cool guitar designs. And he's uh, he was living in Antwerp when we when kind of first met up. Uh, and he's now moved down to Bath, so I haven't actually seen him anymore now he's moved down to Bath, but I'm hoping to see him in the new year. Okay, it's, it's looking really cool. I really like this. I love, I love using glue. I don't know whether or not this is going to hold the water, but I'm going to leave that to set completely before I try and glue it on the model. It's, I'll be uh, probably a disaster. Okay. Davey's technically from Australia, though he lives in Manchester now. He used to be London based, plays at Element a lot. Yeah, that's cool. Love the Element stuff, like, um, nice big spaces. I do go down to Bad Moon, but it's like the, the trains have been so bad recently that I haven't managed it. And actually, uh, I don't know, does anyone take part in Ho Ho Hobby Vices? It's like a Christmas Secret Santa that Hobby Vices organises. And this year, or last year, uh, or maybe the year before, um, I, had, I got this guy, Elliot, and now he's one of my, like, is in my gaming group, we meet up regularly. Lovely, lovely guy. It's been, it was really cool, it was a great way of meeting people, actually. Okay, so I'm really going to cut up some more foam so I need my gloves on. Uh, I met I met someone I talked through lighting models when they visit Edinburgh holiday. They come from Canberra. Oh, amazing! I love your uh, I love your your the lighting you <laughs> you have for your models. By the way, it looks amazing. If I ever am in Edinburgh, I'd love to come and say hello. So the idea with this is it's very much going to be lopsided. So this side of it will have a lot more weight on, although probably need to balance. And probably need to balance the weight on here. But this will be elevated, so it'll be there'll be lots of towels and stuff sticking over, it, and this will be reasonably flat. I think the bulk of her cabling will come out this way, and also the water river effect. So I'm going to build this up quite high, I think, to about here, maybe. And then, and then I carve that. Okay, 
So if we start, I think if we start up here, how am I going to do this? Possibly like layers like that. All right, see you later, mate. Thank you so much. Yeah, if I'm still on, <laughs> I'm still on. I'll see how it goes. I feel like my my voice is going already. It's quite difficult. I don't realise how difficult it is to just talk continuously, or like as much as I can do. Well, it seems like pretty much everyone's from England here, um, or Scotland. Nurgle night blisters and Nurgle's glowing on it inside it. That sounds absolutely amazing. I'm using my phone at the moment, so I can't see it. But what I'll do is when um, when I finish this, I'll, I'll have a look. But to be honest, it just sounds like it sounds like such a cool idea that I think go for it. Come on. <laughs> God no. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I was gonna say I'd be I would I would be pretty surprised if it, like every single person was like it's definitely not uh I don't know how much you know, I don't know how much everyone puts where they're actually from on kind of on their social pages, but most on on all the kind of like analytics breakdowns i say like about 20 percent of the people that i interact with are from the uk 20 percent from the us uh about five, i think it's five percent from australia and then there's like misc kind of european like quite a few people from singapore and um, people from japan a lot of a lot of german a lot of people from germany which is nice My brother lives in Tokyo and somebody showed him one of my models, <laughs> which I, was, I felt I was like, oh, I've gone international. Okay. Cool, nice. We've got Finland, France, France as well, Italy. West Yorkshire. Very nice, God's own country. Well, I think that, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm very excited about going to Manchester for Warhammer Fest and meeting people from all over. Add something a bit more rigid. I'm going to do this round here. So that... mm -hmm. Probably should have done that lower. A lot of these contact points aren't going to be particularly strong, but once you layer 
extra extra bits on and glue those bits and glue those bits i always think i'm building up like a lattice where everything will eventually kind of stick onto each other nicely <laughs> uh i don't i'm really sorry like uh i would i'd love to have a t ticket for the kit bash competition um but it was like i think it's like 45 pounds <laughs> i might have a look at i might have a look at it later on uh i think we we, we just booked our hotel um gonna cost up like food and drink and stuff and then uh we'll, and then we'll we'll sort of see uh what we've, what we've got left because also i want to buy i want to buy some toys <laughs> i really want to buy some toys so <laughs> yeah my god that uh the new gw store i i'm like i wish they would build what something like that in the uk like it looks absolutely beautiful gw store in, in tokyo if you haven't seen it it is as nice as you would imagine a gw store in tokyo being which is really nice Glue gun's quite poor, which is annoying. I have to just push. I think it was designed for like longer glue strips, and I'm using these little teeny tiny ones, so I have to push it through. <laughs> Amazing, mate. Thank you. <laughs> that is very, very cool. You're, uh, yeah, getting there. <laughs> so, I did look at that and I thought, you know, I do build very quickly. I, you know, <laughs> I could, I could go for it. Amazing, guys. Well, if you know, if I, if, if I get there to the, to get that amount, what I'll do is we'll do like a little poll. And obviously, see what the bits are available on the day. But maybe we we'll have a maybe we can have a chat about what we what I can actually try and make in the time, because it'd be it'd be cool to try and fit something in that everyone's contributed to and like come up with. Uh, no, my my friend didn't get in either. Both of us both of us got cancelled. So to, to give you an idea, like I think there's something like fourteen thousand people enter every year. And there's there's a thousand places and each year it's curated by someone different. So there's always a completely different chance that, you know, chance that you might get in like a following year. So I think we're just going to we're just going to keep trying. Some people spend like some people spend years and years and years trying to get in. Uh, I think Joe Lysett got in once but didn't get in again. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, nice. OK, I'll uh, I'll have a look for that cordless gun. Because I want to make some house stuff. I want to make some light lampshades and stuff soon. So I'm going to need a little bit more finesse than my... Um... <sighs> Gunji kit bashing. Oh, I'm really happy with how this is going. Really, really happy with how it's going. So at the moment, what I'm trying to do is get as much kind of structure onto it as possible so that when I come to fill in the details, I've got lots of interesting shapes and uh, materials and like places for it. Uh, I probably won't keep the... Well, what I might do with the globe is I might do some patches. So if there's if there's an area that's completely clear, 
I'll basically cover it over when I when I start to spray, so that you've got that kind of you can see through to it. Because I really like I really like some of these illustrations. Or I might do the internal, so that the internal's still there. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, mate. Well, uh, yeah. Enjoy your enjoy your work, walk with your dog. like a bubble and then you can see through underneath to it that'd be quite fun let's try that uh where is my dough yeah like chipping although i just thought i've got this see-through plastic dome and it's quite nice to have lots of see-through plastic things so Why is the lion's architecture always so gloomy? <laughs> I think he's a he's a very like taciturn character, isn't he? Like, I can't imagine him. I can't imagine him making any jokes. Or if if I if he did make a joke, uh, it would be I don't know. It would be fairly bleak. So what I'm thinking here is I might cover over just like a small section of this dome so you can like a peephole so you can see through to it. <laughs> this is full of dark angels <laughs> right okay uh i don't think it's it's not confirmed yet like they haven't they haven't said why he's um they haven't said how he's woken up um it's not from it's he hasn't woken up on the rock i think there's a bit in the new uh far sight book about finding like a dark some sort of dark angels relic technology that might be some sort of, uh, I don't know, like escape ship or something, um, which I don't really understand. But there is the there is the Lions books coming quite soon, so I think that that will hopefully reveal all. But yeah, they're 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 going for that he's been awake for a while. Now, he was definitely asleep during the Gathering Storm events because old Eldrad pondered about whether or not to wake him up instead of Gilliman. Uh, which is a nice bit of lore that like kind of went under the radar. So I think we will see. Okay, this is going to be really fun. He's been active and oh wow, has it been active and walking around the galaxy for a millennium? <sighs> I mean that'd be pretty intense. That could be very intense, couldn't it? I mean the you know, like Gathering Storm books are out of print, you know, I don't think I don't think it mentions that in anything other than the game books, so we'll see if that It feels a bit funny to have him. I don't know. Does it? Does it feel a bit funny for to to have him back? 
like it's a little bit unearned. To, I mean, to have him back without... Um, See if I can find a picture of a lion on here. There's got to be a picture of a lion. Oh shit, maybe I just carried it up, cut, just covered it over. Got this sort of like old light bulb fitting. Uh, Linker, some naked women, some sort of rat, a bear, dragon, some ships. Sea monster. <laughs> ah, yeah, I do like a peep show over that back bit. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> when Sanguinius and Horus come back. Oh my god. <laughs> Horus is dead. Come on. He's gone. We've had clone Horus. It can't have the it can't have the Emperor unobliterate him, I think. That would be that would be a step too far, probably. Okay, so this one. Let's, let's move this slightly. Oh, new clone men would be a great army. Um, I really like the Fabius Bar books, and I think it's one of those. It's one of those interesting ones that is uh, sort of under the radar. That if they ever wanted to make a main storyline, they absolutely could with having like his new men revolution, or clone Filgrim, or <laughs> uh, or he could clone someone else. You know, like uh, it's, it's interesting, kind of having him as this potential like galaxy ending threat but because he's so because he's spending all of his time trying to work out how to just like defeat it defeat death he isn't really doing anything like he's he isn't really doing anything that interesting he's doing interesting stuff but he's not like a big threat to other people if that makes sense Look, I'm going to have to hold this for a bit. The magic of Blue Gun Blue. I think I'm going to run out before I've, I've... I thought I had enough three sticks, but I think I'm going to run out because I've used so much. Really happy with, like, actually having some actual liquid on this. I thought, yeah, nice, nice adds to the kind of brackish bit of threat. I'm just going to hold that there. Uh, yeah, clone clone, clone Phil Gr Fulgrim is in Trazen's hands. Um, that's interesting. I had an idea to do, uh, to basically do a big model of Trazen sitting in his throne, throwing tesseract cubes out that have uh, different units from like all of history. So you know, have like some Seraphon uh, as like old ones, and how or like some I don't know some 
uh, Exodite place have some 30k Space Marines. Uh, have a really wild selection of models and I got a uh, 3D print of Trazin sitting on his throne but it's pretty small so it really didn't end up being like big enough I think for there we go. I think that looks cool it didn't really it didn't end up being big enough for what I wanted it to be uh, so I, I've, I've kind of back to the drawing board a little bit with that at the moment Yeah, it's definitely on my list. Uh, my list of um, uh, potential builds for this year. But like, I love the idea. I love the idea of a vault because then lots of people could join in on that, and that'd be really cool. It's always quite difficult doing creative stuff because doing like collaborations. Because I don't know. I mean, like for me, I find the inspiration strikes. You really love making something, and then you get over it and you forget about it. <laughs> I don't know. Full grown user throne for <laughs> right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have a half an hour break and then I'm gonna pop back. I'm just gonna eat some lunch and then I'll start again at twelve thirty. Am I gonna start at twelve thirty? What time is it now? Uh, One thirty. So if you want to join me back again, that that'll be really cool. It would be very cool if you had full grim, full grim versus full grim. I would love that. <laughs> That'd be absolutely excellent. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's been really enjoyable. That's been amazing. So, yeah, hope to see you again in a little bit. All right. Cheers.